chapter 16. This particular chapter is a new chapter, a new turn, if you may, in the, in the whole ministry of gospel and missions. This is a new beginning because the gospel is about to enter a zone that has never entered before. It's just leaving behind the familiar and moving into the unfamiliar. And that was absolutely orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand when God takes us from something that we are kind of exposed to into something that is unfamiliar. Two things normally happen. Number one, there will be changes in the natural. You know, changes happen in order to propel us into something unknown. And in this case, we know a travel companion of Paul for many years by the name John Mark left and got separated and moves into a different direction with Barnabas. How many of you know the entire ministry of Paul right from the beginning till this moment was accompanied by the, with, with Barnabas traveling with him? But that got changed at this point. And I wanted to know, you know, I'm trying to glean something out of it for my personal life as well. Separation sometimes is an announcement that something new is about to happen. And then we move and see the Holy Spirit was the key component in this whole, you know, transition or change. And that's where we want to start today. It's going to be deep. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be blessed. So are you with me? We're going to learn something new today. So let's go. How the Holy Spirit was the architect behind this change. We read from chapter 16, verse number 6. Onwards, And they went through the regions of Phrygia, of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. I want you to speak the word forbidden. Let's continue. And they went through the... And when they had come to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, Bithynia or but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So there is resistance, hindrance coming from the Holy Spirit. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. Now I want you to understand, people of God, one of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to restrain us and to stop us on our tracks. Now that's not something that people associate the Holy Spirit with. The Holy Spirit is always seen as dynamic and always propelling us, the, the wind of change and pushing us into something so powerful. We always anticipate the move of the Holy Spirit as a move of taking us forward. But remember, the Holy Spirit also has a ministry of holding us back. I sense quietness in the church. He, he, he prevents us. He refrains us. He kinds of shackles our steps. And many people don't like this part of the Holy Spirit's ministry. Because we are living in a time of get things soon and, and you know what? Highly, uh, what do you call, active kind of an era. Where we want everything to be instantaneous. A, a, a delay is not something that we appreciate. And patience is not a virtue that we glorify anymore. Anytime we go through patience, we start acting like patience. <laughs> Sick. But let me tell you something. That's one of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It refrains us. So I'm going to make an announcement today. And I want to put it as clear as I can on record. For me, personally, I would appreciate the restraining of the Holy Spirit than His silence. I would want the Holy Spirit to stop me then is silence allowing me to get into things that I'm not supposed to. I want the Holy Spirit to forbid me then allowing me to get into things that are forbidden. Come on. 
How many of you want to say from now on, every step I take, Holy Spirit, you have the power to stop me, to forbid me, to change my, you know, goings and to change my plan. You have complete authority. Can I hear somebody who can say an amen in the house of the Lord? That is one powerful ministry of the Holy Spirit. We cannot tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we want you to guide me, but I'm going my path. I want you to bless me in that. The Holy Spirit is not a mere blesser. He is the leader. He is the architect. He is the one who directs the path. Let me tell you, we have to stop praying. Lord, I'm walking. I want you to bless me. But start praying, God, I want you to lead me to where I need to walk. And then I want you to lead all the way to my destination. If you believe that, can you say an amen in the house? The restraining ministry of the Holy Spirit is so important. So before I proceed, how many of you can graciously thank God for the areas and the ministry of restraining that pulled you out from some big mistakes. Is that all? Can I, because it's a Holy Spirit, you know, Holy Spirit focused church. So can I repeat that question and expect a much more vital or, you know, energized response? Here we go. How many of you are glad that the Holy Spirit stopped you on your track, prevented you from moving forward, forbid you at times, and change your whole plan? And because of that, you are alive today and you can have a future. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now let me go ahead. You got it. You got it. This is going to be a teaching session as well. Now the Holy Spirit did that restraining ministry. Now, here is what the Lord told me. Number one, he told me, it's a negative kind of a ministry of the Spirit. It's preventing you, forbidding you. And can you imagine, look at this please. You're moving and moving and moving. All you know is you don't feel led to do something. All you're feeling is a prevention. So you are just going through the motions. You're still moving. Are you missionaries? Yes, you are missionaries. Are you in the mission field? Yes, you are in the mission field. Are you with Christ? Yes, you are in Christ. But nothing specific, nothing impactful, nothing groundbreaking is happening in your life. Is anybody who knows what I'm saying? Come on, can I? You know, it's Good, it's true that the Holy Spirit is preventing and stopping you, but deep down, you know, things that you really want to do is not happening. You know, if somebody asks you, you, you would say, you know, Pastor, I'm just going through the motion, I'm doing things, I'm in the Lord, I'm, I'm serving the Lord, I'm in the ministry, I'm in the church, it's all fine. But, but the real thing that God has called you to do, you're not able to do, come on. And the Lord told me today, there's going to be a shift in the atmosphere where God is not just going to do a preventive ministry in your life, He's going to do a forwarding ministry in your life. It's not what you're not going to do. It's about what you're going to do in the days to come. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, you know what? I want to put this into one word. The management of your life, in, of course, with the glory of the Holy Spirit in it, is about to end. It's not management of your life, but things specifically happening. So let me ask you today, how many of you want to enter the season where you're not just managing and you're in the missions, you're in the Lord, you're doing things, but, but not the actual things that God, you're not getting a leading, you're not getting a direction, do this, do that, do this, do that. The positive urge of the Holy Spirit is missing in your life. And I want to tell you today, mark my word, from a negative prevention and refraining, you're about to enter into a season of positive, specific action of God in your life if you believe that. I want some help with the monitors here. 
If you really believe that, I want you to give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. It's not... Specifically, the Lord asking you to do this, go to this place, get into this action. That kind of a time is coming to your life. And this week, for some people, it's about to happen in the name of Jesus. It's not just the preventing, managing ministry of the Holy Ghost. It's also the action ministry of the Lord. Hey, come on. Are, are, you, are you happy with the way where the Lord is taking this. Now I know why the Lord gave it to me in a dream. So let me go ahead. I was on my face and the Lord gave one line. I don't want to speak that word that God gave me in the days to come. If it's from the Lord, he will show it. He will reveal it. But let me tell you, from the, the change happened, it was not, you know, that's a bit loud. You know, the change happened, it was not just they're going and getting no f sense of doing things, doing things. Suddenly, at Troas, the next word, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, come over to us, mass to Macedonia and help us. I'm here to declare from the preventing ministry of the Holy Spirit, some of you are going to enter into the specific Come, go, this place, what needs to be done, kind of specific action days of your life. If anybody wants that ministry of the Holy Spirit, can you just give the Lord a praise in the house? You know, is anybody willing to say, God, I thank you for you know, preventing my things and stopping me from getting into things that I shouldn't have and slowing me down and thank you for that. I'm thanking you for that. But today, I'm also going to give you thanks because the days of inaction is over and I'm about to enter a season where God will tell me exactly what to do, how to do it, where to go and what needs to be done. If you want that to be your life, can you make an agreement? Amen in the house of Allah. You, hey, for a few seconds, let me take delivery of this prophetic word. You know, on behalf of our church, we have been in this season where God did not allow us to do that. He slowed us down. Even with the building, he said, just wait, just wait. But I believe we are entering a new season where it will be specific action. Do it. Come here, do this, take action. Can somebody shout, Amen in the house of the Lord? From a priv Because some of you were really dealing with the question, what next? What should I do with my life? And I'm here to declare, the Lord is going to give you specific direction as to what need. Come on, if you are believing in that ministry of the Holy Spirit, put your hands together. Give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. The ministry of action, the ministry of sending you forward, the ministry of what to do next. Hey, I love it. That's the shift. But can I go a little deeper today? No, I didn't hear that. Can I go a little deeper? A little more deeper? Now, what is interesting, because when the Lord told me what in the dream, I went to this passage, didn't make sense to me, so I read it again. Now, what is so interesting, brothers and sisters, this is very interesting, very, very interesting. The word come over, come over, it's in the imperative verb or, or, or action word, meaning it's a command. The word help us, is a, it's kind of imploring. So you've got command and imploring, together in one line. So when the man appeared in the dream, we don't know who this man is. We don't know who this man is. And some people said it could be, you know, because there's a story behind. How many of you know this land called Macedonia belonged to Philip? Now who is Philip? We have got a few Philips in this church. <laughs> Philip the son of 
history very poor. Philip, the son of, I'm the father of, I'm, I'm poor in my life. Father of, what? Alexander the Great, good for you, brother. Philip, the father of, I saw his wife saying, wow. That part of you I didn't know yet. <laughs> Philip, the father of Alexander the Great. And it is from Alexander, Alexandria or Macedonia that Alexander one day decided to take over the whole world. He said, I want to bring the whole world under one and make it one world. It was from Macedonia. And here is something that's getting kind of recreated. It was once upon a time Alexander who wanted to go for Macedonia and conquer the whole world. Now it's a Holy Spirit from the same place he's about to conquer the whole world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a God we serve, the God of histories repeated. Oh, come on. So I tell you something. There was a time that Canada was called, and I certainly believe in a sense we are supposed to be that, the light, the beacon of hope. And I declare today, from the land of Canada, this historic thing is going to be repeated, where we will once again become the beacon of hope because of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the ministry of the Holy Ghost. But I'm still not come to my point. Come over. That's the dream. Come over. But interestingly, you know, two translations have captured that variable. One is the Holman, you know, Christian Standard Bible. The Greek word over there has only been used three times. And the word is not come over, it's crossover. So a church from the, you know, it is true you had the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You have experienced the Holy Spirit, but there's going to be a crossover that's going to happen. Where it's not going to be just a refraining ministry of the Spirit, but also an impact producing. Something that can change. Something that can make things happen. That kind of a crossover is about to happen in our midst, in some of our lives. Somebody say crossover. So what the man in the dream is saying, crossover. You know, whenever you see the word crossover, that means it's not an easy transition. There's something that's preventing you, but you're pushing yourself to cross over. And in this case, physically, it's the Aegean Sea that connects Turkey with Greece. The Aegean Sea. So the man is saying, you're on the other side of the sea, but would you cross over into our land? Because we need salvation. We need you to help us. Let me tell you, every crossover is not about you if it's from the Holy Spirit. It's about helping somebody. It's about blessing somebody. How many of you want a crossover of the Holy Spirit in your life that you can be a blessing to somebody? If you believe that, can you say amen in the house of the Lord? It's not about you. It's about helping somebody. You know, whenever we hear the word crossover, it's about my life has been in a status quo, kind of a standstill. I'm cross cross, cross, o o moving, crossing over into something better. That's not what I have in my mind. Today, the crossover is a Holy Spirit orchestrated crossover. You're crossing over for one purpose, that to help somebody. Somebody is crying out, I want help. Some family is crying out, I need help. And how many of you want to say, God, I'm crossing over into a new ministry of the Holy Ghost in my life. If you believe that, give the Lord an amen in the house. Crossing over to bless somebody. But I, I like the three places where this verse is used. Let me bring the two places. Are you ready? Two places. I want the enemy to hear this because there's a command from the Lord and we are going to... This word crossover is the word diabrino. 
Dia Brino. Dia Brino. But look at the word, place where it's used in the Bible. Luke 16, 26. Luke 16, 26. The same Dia Brino. And beside us, there's a huge gulf or chasm has been fixed in order that those who would, would want to pass from here to you may not be able. So the word pass from here or cross is a word dia brino. Meaning what God is saying, Jesus is giving a parable or a story. He said, you know, once somebody goes into eternity, there's a huge gulf that a person from there cannot come here. And a person from here cannot go there. There's a chasm, there's a gulf in between. Meaning it is almost impossible. In some cases God has done a miracle, but in the natural it's impossible. Because there's a gulf. And that's the word cross, diabrino. Meaning something that is impossible to do. But you, you can't cross. Oh, you didn't hear me. The second time this word is used is Hebrews 11.29. Hebrews 11.29. The word diabrino. But in this, oh, Hebrews 11.29. Whoo. Then this message is going to get more exciting. We lost Hebrews. <laughs> By faith the people crossed. Again we see something that is not normal. Some, something that is not easy to do. So that's the word that is used by the Holy Spirit. And I'm here to say to somebody, the crossing over that the Lord is speaking to you is now a big difficult task. But it's a command from God, cross over. And I'm here to say, in spite of how hard it is, is anybody willing to say, if the Lord wants me to cross over, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, I will cross over. Amen. Cross over into something that is never seen before, never heard before, never gone before, new, new familiar, unfamiliar territory. If the Lord is asking you to cross over, can you declare today what is impossible with man is possible with the Lord? The Lord will open a door. The Lord will open the path and will let me cross over if you believe that can I hear the voice of people who believes in the power of the Holy Spirit that can help you cross over if you believe that shout an amen in the house hey come on so I'm going to give you a one more moment because this is a you know kind of packed with you know prophetic or anointing of the Holy Spirit God is going to take you into something that you have never imagined. Something that looks impossible. Something that is glorious. Something that will show forth His power. And it's a ministry of the Holy Spirit that's going to take you there. But are you ready to say, in spite of what I see, in spite of my circumstances, if God wants me to cross over, I'm going to cross over by the power of the Holy Ghost. If you believe that, give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. Hey. Hey, you know, if, I, if you don't mind, can you tell at least somebody, can you at least turn to somebody and say, you know, if the Lord wants me to cross over, I will cross over. Oh, come on, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now look at this, can we go to Acts 16 once again? It's going to be profound. Acts 16. I'm going to show you something else that I've never seen before. Acts 16. And let's go to 6 onwards. And a vision appeared to Paul. Okay. Somebody say the word Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Did you see that there? Let's go to the next verse. And when they had come to Messiah, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit of? Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Let's go. Mm. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go, immediately we sought. When God says crossover, don't waste your time. Do it right there. 
It might look difficult, but do it. And absolutely sure that God, the word is capital L-O-R-D, the word used for Jehovah. What do you see in this story? You see God the Father. You see God the Son, Jesus. You see the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you today, I want somebody to just say it, not because I'm provoking you from your heart. If God the Father is on your side, if God the Son is on your side, if God the Holy Spirit is on your side, how many of you can jump up and say, I'm crossing over? Come on, somebody put your hands together. Nothing is impossible to my God. Nothing is impossible to my God. Nothing is impossible to my God as long as I've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I'm crossing over into something more powerful that's going to be groundbreaking, something that's going to change the destiny of nations. Somebody shout a hallelujah in the Oh, oh, come on, how many of you are happy today? You know, I'm going to take the lid off limitations right now. Even God says, I'm going to take you to a place that you have never seen. I have managed your life now, but now it's not more about managing. You are going to impact somebody's life. You're going to impact somebody's situation. You're going to impact a nation. Are you ready to say yes? Ooh, I feel like preaching now. The next one is only for a special group. That group is available here, and I'm going to detect who all belong to that group. <laughs> okay, here we go. Next to us. So setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage. Now they're crossing the Aegean Sea. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Oh my goodness. Anytime you've got babies, and if you want me to dedicate your children, please be careful with the names that you give. Some more, some more praise. And the following day to Neapolis. There we go. And from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in the city some days. Now, I wanted to say the word some days. Is it possible that God can give you a mighty revelation and powerful word and then you cross over and then you're still in the same place of waiting? Look at everybody. Have you been in a place where you've got this mighty prophetic word and you know it's God and you know absolutely beyond a shadow of doubt God has moved me and then you come, you come to the place and you're still... Anybody who knows what I'm saying? You're still waiting. Why would God take you to a place and a lot of visions and dreams and powerful word and make you move and the Holy Spirit and the Father, Son, all of them are involved and then you cross over and then you sit quiet. And hear me just say something. Mark my words. If the Lord is behind this crossing over, even if you have to sit for a few days, your next few days, you're going to see that he was orchestrating. You can sit not fully on the chair. You sit on the edge because you know it's coming. It's coming. Let me tell you, I used to sit. But now I'm sitting. But there's a little difference. Now I'm sitting on the edge, because I know it's coming. It's the same sitting, same waiting, but you know it's coming. But where is it coming from? From the most unusual sources. Because Paul had a custom. Every place, new place he goes, the first thing he does is, is, is very organized in that. He will go to the synagogue. So what do you expect? You're going to a new place, the first thing you want is, Go to a synagogue, maintain the modus operandi of your ministry, and what happens is no synagogue. So what does he do? He's going to, on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to Riverside. 
Now, how many of you think the greatest move of God is going to start from the beach? I'm preventing people from going to Hawaii. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Because you expect what you have seen in the past to happen, but that's taken off. There's no point of reference removed. You're hanging in the air, and you're going to Riverside, so the enemy is mocking you, saying you had all this great ministry and the Lord appearing to you in the dream and vision and all that. Wow, you fool. You don't even have a base, which you used to have in other places. A riverside? What are you going to do there? Sit on the beach and count shells? What are you going to do there in the beach? And then there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to women. Hey, come on. You should understand the culture of that place. Because in a synagogue, it's only men. There cannot be a woman in the synagogue. So God is changing the scenery as well as the congregants. Let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit is about to send you to a new place, it's not what you plan, what you know. It's not your expectation. He's something, doing something brand new in your life. If you believe that, can you shout a hallelujah? Oh. Oh. Can, can somebody encourage me over here? It may, not, it may not be what you expected, but... God has a way of surprising you. Out of the least expected place is going to have come the most powerful move of God. It's from a riverside and from women that God is, because he wants to show you the source of your blessing is not your circumstance. It's God and God alone. Can somebody shout hallelujah? See, the source, the source of your blessing is God and God alone. <laughs> oh, I can sense the anointing. But what I like here, and I want to address one section of our, of our church today. And if I don't see them excited, I'm going to have a word with you after the service over. I'm going to talk to the women. All the women in this church and the people who support the women, can you make some joyful expression of it? Hey, the women! The misogynistic people, I'm going to pray for you after this. Women! What is, what is so interesting? I'm going to prove something today. Are you ready? From this point onwards till the end of this mission trip, the second mission trip of Paul, he visited few places. He visited Philippi, then he goes to Thessalonica, then he goes to Berea, then he goes to Athens, and finally he goes to Corinth. No, Ephesus. So he touches, so he goes to Philippi, to Thessalonica, to Berea, to Athens, and then to Ephesus. Let's look in every place what is, this has never happened before, never. This is a new season. Let's look at when he went to Thessalonica, okay? Acts 17 and verse number 4. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas. This is in Thessalonica. As did a great many of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading Come on. God loves women. Hey. Let's go to Berea. Okay? This is what people want to bury the women folks. Yeah. We go to Berea. Acts 17 and verse number. Uh, verse number. Okay. 12. Many of them therefore believe with not few of new or a few Greek women of some noble women. The Lord is removing the lid, but today the Lord is breaking the ceiling. 
or some women and bringing you out. Can I get some women who want to praise the Lord? Okay, women. Now, that's barrier. So noble women, noble women. Some of the key women are getting involved. Okay? Now, if he goes to Athens, nobody got saved. You know, it was a very dry place. But look what happened in Athens. Uh, chapter 17, verse number 34. 34 17. But some men joined him and believed, among whom also were Dionysius, the Aerophagite, oh. and a woman named... Every place now is going, some women will come out. And some of you, I feel you have got such difficulty in accepting this. Let's break it now. The women are coming out. It's a new season for the women. Because in Christ there is no man, no women. We are all made one in Christ Jesus. Can somebody shout a hallelujah in the house? But then, the last place it goes, is, is, it goes to Corinth, right? Corinth. So he goes 18.1. And this Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, to verse number two, and he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, recently came from Italy, and his wife. And how many of you know, before you know, Priscilla becomes a leader. In all the five places after this visitation, God is touching the women. You remember Pastor Elias, when he was there, he said, Pastor Anis has a prophetic word for you. Women are going to rise up from this church. Come on. Can I get somebody to believe it today? The Lord is telling people who are not supposed to come out, people who are held back, they are coming out in the name of Jesus. It started with, if you believe that, it's not just for the women, everybody that has pushed back, the Lord is taking you out in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, put your hands together, give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. This is a time where God is bringing some people out of their hiding in the name of the Lord. Your time has come. Oh, Rabbi Shantala. And the Lord told me to tell you, the next season is rising up. And the season is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. Everybody that the enemy pushed into oblivion are coming out, are standing out, are becoming visible. This is a ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now let me go ahead. I'm coming to the last point. And get ready for a breakthrough. Here we go. Acts 16 and verse number, you know, 16 onwards. As we are going to the place of prayer, the next event is happening. Because it's going to be event after event. We were met by a slave girl who had the spirit of divina, divination, or divination, yeah, or divination. And brought her honors, much gained by fortune. Telling, there's a spirit of python. She followed Paul and asked, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul having become greatly annoyed. Somebody say annoyed. You know, you can suffer for some days. But you're entering into a season that the enemy cannot trouble you for too long before, without you becoming annoyed. <laughs> Sitting quiet and accepting everything that the enemy is throwing at you is coming to an end. Some of you are going to say, enough is enough. Can I get somebody whose heart is rising up and say, Pastor, I've been in a situation where the enemy attacked me, and somehow I learned to live with that kind of an attack. But let me tell you, learning to live with that kind of an attack is coming to an end. Some of you are going to get annoyed and say, enough is enough. God, in the name of Jesus, I'm rising up with... Hey, come on, hallelujah. Is anybody who wants an anointing where you're going to get annoyed with the devil? Come on, annoyed with what the enemy is throwing at your life, annoyed with the powers of darkness. If that's your desire, get ready for this anointing because words are coming out of your mouth with such power. It's a day of annoyance. Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready. 
Huda Raraba, Shantala Raba Sihana. There was a time that you could go through the same situation and, and somehow get adjusted to that situation. But now it's different. You can go through it for a few days, but then you suddenly get annoyed and say, enough is enough. So let me declare, as a servant of a living God, some of you are going to take back your rightful position. You're going to tell the enemy that is attacking your life, your family, your children, and say, I am annoyed, I can't take this anymore, and I declare in the name of Jesus, come out. Come out. Let me tell you some powerful move is going to happen in your family. If you're willing to say yes to that, shout an amen in the house of the Lord. Come out. Oh, come on. And the Lord told me to tell you, how many of you want to have an anointing where you are going to become vocal? Now let me put that once again. How many of you want to have an anointing where you're going to become vocal against the devil? Come on, how many of you want to say, in the name of Jesus, I'm taking back what the Lord has given to me and what is rightfully mine. This is a new season in your life. It's a crossover season. Oh, Rabbi Shandala Ramahala Masi. I don't want you to get too excited enough when I'm saying this, but at least can you show an expression in your eyes at least, or with your hand. I'm declaring over you an anointing in this new season of crossover where you will not take the dirt of the enemy for too long. You could go through it for a season, but then you're going to tell the devil, enough is enough. I'm annoyed at what you're doing. You need to come out and leave. And let me tell you, the Bible says, in that very hour, very hour, the devil has no validity after your announcement his expiry time his announcing time somebody say yes in the house of the lord I'm hearing a loud sound in my spirit. His expiry time is your announcement time. Come on. Somebody say yes right now. His expiry time is your announcement time. That means when you open your mouth, that determines his moment of expiry in that place. Can somebody say Jesus? The devil has somehow given us an impression. He has got eternity and longevity in his affairs. But Lord told me to tell you, your moment of announcement is his moment of expiry in that particular place. Some of you, can you bring this together? That means you open your mouth and his activity gets called off comes to an end. If you believe there is power in the name of Jesus, those of you believe in the power that raised Jesus from the dead, can you make a noise that's going to make the hell tremble right now? Can somebody shh? Hey. Come on, you might be a weak person. You might be a person who was kept in oblivion. But this is a moment where you're rising up in power. In the name of Jesus. You know, can I say this? The Lord is telling me to tell you. I'm going to do something in your life that you will know beyond a shadow of doubt. It's me. Oh, you didn't hear that. You will know beyond a shadow of doubt, it's me. Because what cannot be done by humans, I'm about to do in your life. It won't be a trick or treat. It won't be a coincidence. It won't be a luck or charm. It will be the move of God explicitly seen in your life. Can you receive it right now in the name of Jesus? How do I know it's God? Because the Bible says, the Lord opened the heart of Lydia. Let me tell you in this season, you cannot open anybody's heart. 
You can struggle, you can have moments, you can advise, but you cannot open anybody's heart. But let me tell you, you're entering into a new crossover season where you will speak and God will do the rest. God will open the hearts of people. He will change lives. Let me ask you something. Is there anybody in this place who wants to see that God is working with you? No, you didn't hear me. I said God is working with you. Come on, somebody receive it. In the midst of my grief, that's all what I asked the Lord. I want to see that you're working with me. Come on, can somebody say, I'm entering into a season where I know that I know that God is working with me because what is impossible is happening only because of God. Oh, shut up. Achagunja, there's a word for you. Keep praying, everybody. You're entering a season where he will prove to you that he is the one who brought you. He is the one who arranged this. Because when you're speaking things that you can never do, you cannot open anybody's heart. He will do it for you. If the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit commanded it to cross over, the Lord is telling me, I am going to show at every step when you open your mouth, I am working with you. Strongholds will start to crumble. The spirit of Python will start to disappear. Come out. Come on. The anointing where you will just look at somebody and say, I didn't even know how this happened. And the Lord will say, you didn't do it, I did it. Do you want that in your life? Come on. I want people to start praying. I have not come to the end of my message. I am not able to continue, but I want you to know this. People like Paul Rogue and other business people who want to get into business, just get this word. The next word it says, next to us, next to us. This is a very powerful word. But when the owners saw that the hope of gain was gone, you know, interestingly, Luke, when he wrote this, he used the same word in the Greek for the devil went and the money to the owners went. That means it was the devil controlling the finance. But now when the enemy left, the finance that he was controlling is now getting released. And I wanted to go home and read Philippians 4, 10 onwards. It's, everything is about the Macedonian church. He says, nobody helped me. Nobody supported me. It was a Macedonian church. It was that church. That church. You know why? Wherever I went, they supported me. And you know, he writes to Corinth and says, I did not take any money from you because a Macedonian church gave me money to minister to you. Why? This church is now the church that is sending money to every missions. Once upon a time, the money went to the, to, the, to, the, to the people of the world, to darkness. But the Lord said, when the money, the, when the devil left, when the spirit left, the money which went to the enemy is now getting transferred and going to the work of a living God. Do you want that? Somebody receive it. Do you want that anointing? This is a crossover. And it is church to the Philippi that Paul wrote, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Come on, somebody receive it. Right now the Lord says, I'm going to do two things in your life. I'm going to show that I am working with you. You are not alone. If you want that, can you just receive it in the name of
But can I ask you a question? I'm going to pray now. Anybody in this place who believes what man cannot do, my God is able to do. Come on, can I ask that once again? Is anybody who believes what man, what is impossible with man is possible with God? Can you receive it right now in the name of Jesus? If you believe that, make a personal hallelujah sound to the Lord. A personal amen to the Lord. This is your moment. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You knew that, but you didn't see that often. God says, the season has come. When you speak, even on the riverside, I will be opening up some hearts. Somebody, who, a stranger, will be planted at that moment, who is not supposed to be there. She's a businesswoman. Her name is Lydia. She's from Thyatira. She is a person involved with selling purple to kings and royalty. Come on. A woman that has got access to the elite people of the land is now something is happening to her. It's on a riverside. It's not even a church setting. The choir is not singing. The worship is not happening. There is no preacher from outside. But let me tell you, God has taken over. God has taken over. Can somebody believe such moments are going to happen in your life? Can you shout a hallelujah in the house? Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I want the next few minutes to be a moments of prayer. Moments of prayer. Oh, Rabbi Shihana. It's not the way you have seen. We expect things to happen in a certain setting. But God says it's not about the setting anymore. It's about my call. It's about what I want to do. Some of the least expected place. I'm about to do something big. Some of the least places are going to become the cradle of a move of God like never before in the name of Jesus. Do you want that to happen in your life and in your family? Give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord. It is a new season. Oh. Pray, pray. Can I declare this? I hear the Lord telling me, I'm moving, I'm transferring my moves from places that have got proper setting in the natural into places that nobody would expect. And some of you are standing here. But remember, it will be my work if you want to receive it. I want you to next few seconds. Get out of your pew if you want. Don't come to a friend. That's not what I'm calling you. But find some space where you can move out and start praying. Because I'm releasing something right now, prophetically over your life. Shantala Rabba Suyana. This new crossover is not about popular traditional settings. The least expected people. People are not supposed to be at that moment there. It'll be by accident. But remember, do you want setting or do you want God? Do you want the setting or do you want to see the move of God? Do you want to see a traditional setting or do you want to see a fresh move of the Holy Spirit? Somebody say, I want a move of the Lord. I want a new move of the Holy Ghost. Sonia. The family 
If they're here, just tell them, tell them. God bring us, brought people here today specifically for this to be spoken. The Lord is speaking to you. I am going to change the way you're going to view this move. In the city of Edmonton, it will not be the traditional setting. It will be somebody walking in from somewhere with no scenic settings. But the move of God is going to open hearts. He's going to open the door. Do you want to be part of the next season of the Lord? Which is season not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. If you want that, can you say yes in the house of the Lord? Pray, 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 pray. If you want to join hands with somebody, join hands because it's a moment. It's going to be a very powerful moment, believe me. I heard it in my dream and I'm going to believe it. Do you want a season where you can, even though you don't belong to that setting, you can still be the one that can open up the biggest move of God. Can you believe the women? Come on. God is doing something with somebody that people thought will never come out, will never be able to come out. But the Lord says, nobody decides your destiny. I am bringing you out because it's a new season of the Holy Spirit of God. Can you receive it in the name of Jesus? But the Lord is asking me one question. Do you want, are you disappointed with a lack of setting? Or you, are you excited that God is with you? Come on. Are you excited that the Lord is with you? The structure has changed, but the Lord is still with you. Come on, the the. The form has changed, but the Lord is, is still with you. He's going to do miracles. He's going to open hearts. Do you want God in this next season of your life? Can you shout an amen in the house of the Lord? Yes! Oh, get ready, 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 get ready. Shantara Rokobo Shela Mahant. Yes, the structure has changed. The, 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 the what do you call the, the model has changed. But you're not worshipping a model. You're not worshipping a structure. You are led by the Holy Spirit. You're led by God. And you're going to see God come down and do miracles. Jesus was not born in a palace. He was born in a manger. You don't have a structure, but you have God. You have God. Come on, somebody. Can you make this your personal faith? Lord, I don't have what many people have, but I have you, Lord. Come on, can you make that personal? Can you make that personal? The greatest blessing I have is God. The one who asked me to cross over, he's still with me. He's still with me. I have my God. Come on, pray, pray. Pray. Oh, shakala mehe. Hantale rekele me. Just pray, just pray. Pastor Danes. Pastor Marcelo, Pastor Dale, would you come on the platform, please? We have God. We have God. Something mighty is happening. You might be the least person that could fit into this next move of God according to human opinion. But God says, I'm breaking every opinion. I'm breaking every opinion. I'm breaking every opinion in the name of Jesus. If you think that you are somebody who doesn't have visibility according to human structures, can you start praising God? Because God is changing human expectations. 
God is changing human opinion. Come on, somebody walk into this new season of God where the Lord says, one move of mine will shackle every power of evil and transfer the wealth of the wicked to the house of a living God. Can you say yes? Oh, we're going to pray right now. I'm going to ask Greg, come forward, Greg. And I want you to be a representative. Stand here, lift up both your hands, and, and, and lift it up to the Lord. Come here, please. I want everybody to pray at this time. We are going to believe God. We are going to believe God. The season has started. Maybe your family, your finance, your upbringing, where you come from might be absolutely hostile to this expectation. But I'm declaring right now, as a servant of a living God, God is about to break it. I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall see dreams. Even upon the maid servants and upon the female servants, I will pour my spirit upon every flesh. Can somebody believe God is breaking every class, every gender, every structure? Because this move is not about the structure. It's about the Holy Spirit of God. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Lift up your hands, everybody. If you can speak God in, in a language that God has blessed you with, open your mouth and start speaking. Because this is big. If you know to speak in English, speak in English. Any language, but do not remain quiet. God the Father is in this move. God the Son is in this move. God the Holy Spirit is in this move. And the command is to cross over in the name of Jesus. A move that will impact this country. A move that will impact Edmonton. A move that will impact the elections. The move that will impact nations of the world. God is about to release upon the earth. Can you receive it in the name of Jesus? And God says, I'm taking it. I'm beginning it from the least expected of all places. A riverside. A riverside. And a woman who's a foreigner. But God says, that's how I work. But just open your mouth and I will work with you. Do you want that to happen in your life? Are you ready? I want some of you to open your mouth expecting God to open something that nobody else can open. I repeat that right now. Can you open your mouth expecting God to open something that only He can open? Are you ready? I'm going to ask you to open your mouth expecting something that only God can open in this world. Like somebody's heart, the place of revival, something that only God can open. If you believe that, on the count of three, open your mouth expecting God to open something for you right now. One. Two and three. Oh, keep praising, keep praising. Just, just keep doing it because right now God is opening something in your family, opening something in the city, opening something in your finance, opening something in your children's life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, 
Come on, can we shout that name, Jesus, once again? Yes. It's a door of healing opening up. Oh, I can sense it, I can sense it, I can sense it. A door of impossibility is opening up. You are receiving it right now. As a servant of a living God, I release the crossover moment which is going to touch people that don't expect, that are the least ones qualified. But God is going to turn things around. If you believe that, can you give the Lord some beautiful praise of joy? Hallelujah.